Let's quickly examine the application of differentiation to rectilinear motion. So let's talk about velocity and acceleration. So if you study physics, you should be familiar with this, but I'm going to try to explain it carefully. So we say that the velocity is the rate of change of displacement with time. And we say that the acceleration is the rate of change of position with time. So what do we mean by that? So for example, let's assume that you want to travel from point A to point B, say from Lagos to Ibadan, which is a distance of 100 km for instance. So now let's say you intend to travel A to B in one hour. So what would be my average speed or my velocity? So my speed would be my distance over time and that will be 100 over 1. So to move from Lagos to Ibadan, A to B in 100, in 1 hour, I need to move at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. So you can see this rate over here, kilometer per hour, is what we refer to as the velocity. So now, when we know the distance, so sometimes the equation of, or the movement of a body can be given in terms of the time. And what do I mean by that? For example, we can be told that a body is moving based on this function, that the distance it covers is given as a function of time. So now, when I'm told that, how can we find the velocity if we are given that this is the distance covered by the body or the distance function? So the way we go about it is by differentiating the distance function. And when we differentiate the distance or the displacement, function what we get is the velocity so that is what we mean by the velocity is the rate of change of displacement with time so here we have ds over dt so to get the velocity in this case i also have to differentiate this distance function which will be ds over dt and what would that give me when i differentiate this i have what 12 t squared so now what about the acceleration the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with time so now that i found the velocity to find the acceleration, I just need to differentiate the velocity function. And I found the velocity function to be what? 12t squared. So the acceleration will be given as what? When I differentiate this, I have what? 24t. So this is one of the application of differentiation also. When we know the distance function, we can differentiate once to find the velocity function. And we can differentiate twice to find the acceleration for the particle. So let's try to look at a practical example so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we are told that the distance s meters that the particle has gone in t seconds is given by this function. So the distance it covers s is given as 20t plus 12t squared minus t t cubed. So the first part of the question asks us to find after how many seconds is its acceleration zero. So this body keeps moving, moving, moving. And after some time, the acceleration becomes zero. So at what time is the acceleration zero? That is what this first part is asking us to find. And to go about that, first, we need to find the acceleration. But we are given the distance function. And we are told that S is equal to what? 20t plus 12t squared minus 2t cubed. So we have to find the acceleration first. So we can find the velocity. I know that the velocity will just be the differentiation of the distance, which will be with respect to time, which will be ds over dt. And when you differentiate 20t, we have 20. When you differentiate 12t squared, we have 24t. And when we differentiate by those t t cube, we have 6t squared. So now we find the velocity. But the question asks us to find the acceleration function. So the acceleration now will be the differential of the velocity with time. So I have to differentiate this expression once more. And when I differentiate 20, I get 0. 24t becomes 24. And minus t, 6t squared becomes what? Minus 12t. So now I found the acceleration function. So the first part of the question has to define after how many seconds is the acceleration 0. So in other words, if or when a is equal to 0, comma what is t what is t 
So now we have found the acceleration to be given as what? A to be equal to what? 24 minus 12t. So we can easily evaluate this. So I can say that what? When A is 0, I also substitute the value of A as 0 here. So I have 0 is equal to 24 minus 12t. So if I bring 12t to this other side, I have 12t to be equal to 24. And when I divide both sides by 12, I get my t to be equal to what? 2 seconds. So what does it mean? It means that after 2 seconds, the acceleration of the body is what? Is 0. So the answer to the first question is 2 seconds. So now let's move on to the B part. Now in the B part, we are told to find the velocity and the acceleration after 4 seconds. So let's start out with the velocity. So we will find the velocity function here to be given as what? Velocity here to be given as what? 20 plus 24t minus 60 squared. And to recap, to get the velocity, we differentiated the difference, the distance function. So now we can find and substitute the value of t as 4 seconds here to find the value of v. So v will be equal to what? 20 plus 24 into bracket 4, then minus 6 times 4 squared. So that becomes 20 plus, this times this is 96, and when you solve this, you get 96. So the velocity will be what? 20 meter per second. So now let's find the acceleration after 4 seconds. So now we found the acceleration function to be given by this expression here, which is what? 24 minus 12t. So after 4 seconds, what will be the acceleration? So we just substitute the value of t as 4. So a will be equal to what? 24 into bracket 12 times 4. And that is equal to 24 minus 48. Now 24 minus 48 gives me what? Minus 24. And the unit is going to be meters per second squared. So we can see here that the acceleration is negative. And what does it mean? It means that after 4 seconds, the body is actually decelerating. And that is what it means. That is, the rate of change of velocity with time is decreasing. So that is what it means. So to recap, to find the number of time, the seconds it takes for the acceleration to be zero, we first found the action function. And after we got that, we substitute the value of A as zero. I'll make the rate of formula to get 2 seconds. Now, to find the velocity and acceleration after 4 seconds, we use the velocity function and we replace t as 4 to get the velocity after 4 seconds. And for the acceleration function, we use the acceleration function and we substitute t as 4 to get the acceleration to be minus 24 meter per second squared, which indicates that the body is actually decelerating. So this pretty much sums up how we apply the idea of differentiation to solve questions that have to do with motion. So you can go to your textbook and try to look for other relating questions and try to attempt them. So that will be all for now.